Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. And before we jump in, thank you so much once again for your continued support. We did go live tonight for our full podcast, so keep that in mind. Every Wednesday between 7.30 and 8 o'clock, we will jump on live for about 90 minutes to chat it up, you know, speak with our new fans and people that are supporting us. We greatly appreciate you, so we definitely want to have that opportunity to go back and forth. You can, you know, chat it up with us, ask us questions. We will put post your questions. We will chat back and forth with you, so please do every Wednesday from 7.30 to 8 p.m., I'm a Hispanic. I'm Cuban. My my Nick is is a black man, Jamaican. Late. We are late. So we we say 7:30. 7:30 to 8 o'clock. Somewhere in that window, we will jump on live every Wednesday to do our weekly podcast, separate of the rants, separate of C come on CFL, separate of everything else that we do during the week. That said, let's jump right on in. ESPN decided to post a <laughs> top 25 WNBA players at midseason. And needless to say, ESPN does ESPN things, and ESPN decided the people on this panel are Kevin Pelton, Alex Filippo, and Michael Vopel. This list is shit. I mean, this list is straight up shit. I, I, outside of, after number one, the list is complete shit. Let's jump in. Let's show you what this list looks like. All right. As you can see, number one is Asia Wilson. That's not an argument. It's not a debate. It's not a conversation. She is the number one player in the WNBA. She's balling. She's going to be the MVP unless something crazy happens in the last 15 to 20 games, depending on which team it is and how many games they have to play. But Asia Wilson is the the number one player in the WNBA. Brianna Stewart is listed as number two. I'm just going to say it right now. I think the second best player in the league is Caitlin Clark. Call me crazy. Call me stupid. Say she hasn't earned it. She is the second best player in the league. Right now, she has proven to be the second best player in the league. She controls her her team. She, if Without her, her team is, is essentially irrelevant. They're 11 and 15. They started off 1 and 8. So they're sitting here going 10 and 7 since they started off 1 and 8. They've had some bad losses, had some big wins. Rihanna Stewart is the defending league MVP. Um, I, I just don't see it, man. I think Rihanna Stewart's really good, but I think Caitlin Clark's number two. And we can go on from there. So I think the fact that ESPN is dis- – ESPN – badly disrespected Caitlin Clark on this list. But I'm not surprised. How can you be surprised when that's literally all ESPN does to this woman is fucking disrespect her over and over and over again with their band of bums on television every day speaking negatively about her and picking out whatever they can fucking pick out to say something negative so they can push an agenda that they keep pushing for the duration of this entire fucking season so far. Number three, Nafisia Collier. This is outrageous. And I'm going to tell you why it's outrageous. It's outrageous because Nafisa Collier has missed a lot of games. Flat out. Nafisa Collier, let's go look at exactly what she has done this year. She's having a good year. She has missed. Uh, let's see here. I hate the website for the WNBA. It is such a bad website. God, it's so bad. Oh, Lord, it doesn't tell you crap. I hate their site. I'm sorry. Um, Let me find a better thing to pull up the stats. It's easier to read. She's played in... Okay, she hasn't missed as many as I thought. She's played in 20. uh, I believe her team... She's missed five or six. She hasn't suited up since July 4th. So she missed a few games. But realistically... She's having a great she's having a great year, but I'm sorry, she ain't better than Caitlin Clark. Alyssa Thomas at number four. This is laughable. This is laughable. Eleven, nine, and eight. She's a good player. You call her the fourth best player in the league? 
John Quell Jones. So you have two of the top five players in the WNBA are from the New York Liberty. Is that what you're telling me? First off, I don't think John Quell Jones is better than Sabrina Ionescu. That's number one. So that is in itself a problem, although it's arguable for some people that they – so Sabrina Ionescu is the third best player, but Sabrina Ionescu was in the Olympic team, and John Quell Jones was not. Okay. Uh, again, I don't agree. Ja this one that makes me laugh. Jackie Young. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. You're telling me Jackie Young's the sixth best player in the WNBA? This is what y'all telling us is that Jackie Young is the sixth best player in the WNBA? Get the fuck out of here. Like, she's a good guard. She's not. The fact that she was, she was number seven to start the season shows me these guys have no idea what's going on. Uh, please, stop. So the second best player for the Aces is the sixth best player in the league, and the second best player for the Liberty is the fifth best player in the league. Okay. Number seven, Sabrina. So the New York Liberty have three of the top seven players in the league. Look, I think Sabrina's having a good year. I don't think she's I don't think she's better than I, I, I don't think she's better than Caitlin Clark. I don't think any of these girls are better than Caitlin Clark. They're not having the impact that Caitlin Clark's had. This is disrespectful, in fact. And I will tell you right now, this is disrespectful not just to Caitlin Clark, but I'm going to go down further down the list. This is disrespectful to Kennedy Carter. Kennedy Carter is being absolutely dissed right now. <laughs> and I'm not saying Kennedy Carter is a top seven player in the league. Maybe she is. Because what she's done this year is freaking otherworldly. She's been fantastic. NECA, <sighs> NECA Agumake, numbers eight. This is like a, this list to me is like, this is a continuation of the, the uh, they won't let go of the guard. They won't let go of what they hope for the future. Like they won't let go. And even the reporters won't let go. There's a new brand of ball player. Neka Agumwa is having a great year. 17 and seven and a half. Great job. Two and a half assists, 40. I didn't know she shot that well from three, but again, I, I don't agree. I don't agree. De'Erica Hamby should be way higher. De'Erica Hamby should be way higher. Not just because she sued the WNBA and showed them she doesn't give a fuck, but because she's just that good. De'Erica Hamby's not surrounded by a bunch of all-stars. She's playing for the Los Angeles Sparks. They suck. Without her, they would be, I mean, my God, I don't know if they'd have, they'd have a win if she wasn't on their team. I think she should be higher. Todd Cooper. And Kalia Cooper, underrated, underranked. Are you telling me that Kyle Cooper's not better? I'm sorry, who's called Cooper? Kyle Copper's not better than Jackie Young? Not better than Sabrina? Come on, man. Like, come on. This was this. This is disgusting. If you think Kelsey Plum is better than Caitlin Clark, I got sand on the beach to sell you, man, because this is some horse shit. Horse shit. Horse shit. So the three of the, the three of the top eleven players play for the Aces, according to this bullshit. Twelve, Easy Magbagor, Easy Magbagor. So she goes from twenty-two to twelve. But Caitlin Clark ain't ahead of her. Okay. Underranked here, Arike Gumbawale, thirteen. How is this girl not higher? Have they been watching? I do I do agree she is not the most efficient player. She's lighting it up. She's playing on a team that's missing three starters. She's the only one left. I, I'm flat I'm flabbergasted. Jewel Lloyd, 14. <clears throat> This list to me is like a list that was designed to justify the absolute lunacy of Caitlin Clark not on the Olympic team. Jewel Lloyd didn't play in the fucking gold medal game. Jewel Lloyd is a volume shooter, volume scorer. She can't shoot from the perimeter. She's physical. She's tough. She, she plays hard. Miss me with this shit. 
14th. And she went down. Here we go. Oh, welcome here. Caitlin Clark is number 15. So Caitlin Clark is behind Jewel Lloyd, Arike, Kelsey, Kalia Copper, Sabrina, Jackie Young. Six guards. They're calling this girl the sixth, the seventh best guard in the WNBA. Best point guard in the league is the seventh best guard. The best fucking point guard is the seventh best guard in the league. The only player on this list. First of all, here's a bigger problem. You got Jewel Lloyd, number 14, but you got Nikki Agumake at 8, and you got Ezzy Magbogor at 12. There's not a person around that thinks that those two are better than Jewel Lloyd. They're not even the number one option on their fucking team. Jewel Lloyd is. How is Jewel Lloyd the number one option on that team, but ESPN does a ranking and ranks Ogumake and Magbagor ahead of Jewel Lloyd? Make that shit make sense. This is so disrespectful. Like, this is so disrespectful. Leads the M the WNBA, right? That's that leads the league. This leads the league. This leads all rookies. This is like fourth amongst rookies. Leads all WNBA guards. Here we go. Yeah, let's compare. 5.8, 4.6, 4.1, 8 points. She doubles her in assists, a rebound plus more per game, more blocks, three points less because she takes eight shots less. Come on, man. This is this is this is I don't even I don't even know how she's here either. How was Brittany Renner 16? She should be way lower than that. Way lower. Aaliyah Boston should be jumping way through higher in this list. Aaliyah Boston should be top 12. Dewana Bauer, eh, whatever. Angel Reese should be jumping into should be in the top 15. She should be in the top 15. Kayla McBride, whatever. Brianna Jones, whatever. Ryan Howard. Alicia Gray. Tell you what, after that All Star performance and that All Star game and that All Star weekend, I tell you, Alicia Gray, <laughs> she shows people how she can play. But hey, this is bullshit. This is some fuck shit right here. This is some fuck shit. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Kennedy Carter right now is a top. Eight player in the entire league. Might be top five. We're talking about how they're playing this year. We're talking about their impact this year. We're talking about what they're doing this year. I don't give a shit what happened last year, the year before, the year before. She's being punished for shit that she did two years ago. She's being punished for shit that she did when she was in the league and got kicked off the teams, whatever. That's not who this player is. Kennedy Carter is a fucking savage. Kennedy Carter is the most unstoppable guard inside 15 feet in the WNBA. Unguardable inside 15 feet. If she gets that ball inside 15, it's a wrap. She's fucking incredible. She's an absolute fucking baller. She's the best player on the Chicago Sky, yet they have her seven spot. They have her behind Angel Reese. Like, how is she behind Angel Reese? She's the best player on their team, and it's not close. Here we go. No one knew what to expect from Carter made her return to the NBA following a one-year hiatus, but she has been nothing short of sensational. So you use the word sensational, and you rank her down here? Carving out a starting role after initially coming off the bench. Think about that. She's averaging 17-2 after she played the first six games off the bench. If she hadn't played those first six games off the bench, she'd be averaging over 20. Leads them in scoring. Lightning quick. She's unstoppable when she's, get, when she's inside 15. Her mid-range in is incredible. And you're going to sit here and tell me that she's number 24? And the final one is, I think, she's, I think this is way overranked. I don't think Kelsey Mitchell is that fucking good. Like, I can't believe she's on this list. I had a Skylar Diggins. 
Sky, I'm sorry, Skyler Diggins Smith. Skyler Diggins Smith. Are, are you kidding? Uh, she, I mean, uh, this list is crazy. I, I'm floored. I would have Kennedy Carter in the top, probably top eight at worst. She, at worst, she's number eight. If I if I create a list myself, I have Asia Wilson one, um, Caitlin Clark two, Brianna Stewart three. Pro, I'm probably gonna have. I mean. I'm probably gonna have Rico Gumbawale at four, and I'm probably gonna have Kennedy Carter at five. It is what it is. You can push everybody else down. I think Kennedy Carter is that fucking good, and I think she's shown how good she is. And to have her ranked as the tenth best guard, in, like the tenth best guard in the league, is fucking crazy. This is disrespectful, but what's to what's to be expected from ESPN? What is to be expected from ESPN? It never stops. I don't know. You, you, you tell me. What do you think of this list? I'm going to link it. You check it out. But what do you think of this list? What do you... ESPN does this, man. How is this... How, this list is a joke. Caitlin Clark's the seventh best guard in the league? You tell me, man. I'd love to hear your opinions. You, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and ring that bell and share this video. I want to hear your opinions. Please leave a comment. Come on now.